Right, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome to Family Matters again. Um, tonight we have uh, some very special guests, David and Carolyn Bailey, um, and they're going to be talking about uh, forgiveness, uh, based on, well, partly based on a book that David's written, The Wonder of Forgiveness. There we go. And um, yeah, it's going to be a really cool evening, I think, tonight. Um, David, David is the author of this book, The Wonder of Forgiveness, but more importantly, uh, David knows what forgiveness means in a very personal and practical way through encounters with abuse and the more ordinary daily struggle with, with sin. Some of the questions we're going to discuss tonight are things like, how can we forgive when we've been hurt or abused? Is it okay to keep having to forgive? Uh, what about when someone keeps pressing our buttons all the time? Um, and how does forgiveness affect our relationship with God? And we're also going to discuss a little bit about the, the, the joy and the healing of being forgiven. Now, forgiveness is something that affects absolutely all of us, um, whether it's, it's us forgiving other people or us um, needing to forgive or us needing to be forgiven by God. It's affecting all of us, so it's a really important topic, and um, you know, and I pray that uh, that we will all benefit from it tonight. Yeah. Now, just before we begin, I just wanted to do a, a quick Bible reading, um, and I had a look through David's book, The Wonder of Forgiveness, and um, the the uh, first I picked out was actually the one David's quoted most often in his book. And it's this one from Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7. And I'm sure we'll refer to it tonight. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of their fathers to the third and fourth generation. And the other one I thought was appropriate was Matthew 6, verse 14 to 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. There's quite powerful verses on forgiveness there, both with God's forgiveness and the, um, the, the, the principles that he wants us to follow his example and um, follow, yeah, follow in his footsteps and forgive each other. So tonight, we mainly want to talk about forgiving one another. But first, David, I just wanted to ask about your book. You wrote The Wonder of Forgiveness. Um, what motivated you to write it? Um, well, when we came into the truth. Um, I brought with me a lot of baggage. Um, I was 19, but I'd been involved with uh, the music world, um, performing and, and so on, and mixing with those kind of people. And so um, a very worldly um, existence. But when the truth, I came into the truth, um, it was very clear that it was the truth, but I still had a lot of baggage. And I found a book um, called Delight in God's Law by John Carter. Uh, I think it's just a, a, a several articles from the Christadelphian put together into the book. Um, and one of those um, titles or one of the articles was entitled uh, The Wonder of Forgiveness and uh, there were several other articles as well that was one of a series and they really really helped me understand forgiveness uh, right from that time in fact um, I kept copies of those articles uh, photocopied off because the book went out of print and I would mm. give them out to different people. Um, but eventually, it was when we moved to Christchurch, I think, I 
I looked at for an exhort at Psalm 51, and then later on at Psalm 32. And in both occasions, uh, I gave those exhorts. People sort of responded afterwards. And eventually I, I put together a, a little series on, um, I entitled it The Wonder of Forgiveness, a series of talks based on those Psalms and David's, um, David's sin with Bathsheba and the aftermath. Um, and wherever I gave that in different places around the world, it always drew out people and it became really clear to me that people are struggling with the problem uh, of forgiveness and it was usually very personal and it was it was personal sins not really about dealing with other people's sins um so i realized that look uh, we need something on this and there was nothing we've got mm. a lot on the atonement um, and as much as the atonement and all the expositions on that are one needful, very powerful and very helpful, um, there's nothing on the personal side. And so I began, it took me nine years to complete um, because I, I did it in a different structure and um, yep. also I had to come up with some new um, I had to do a lot of study as I went. Um, oh, so yeah, you do, yeah. That's how it happened. Okay. Yeah. So why did you call it the wonder of forgiveness? Can you can you draw draw that out a little bit more for us? I, I guess it was um, because of that title from Brother Carter. Um, it it expresses the, the wonder of it, but it's also biblical. Um, the a word, uh, Hebrew word palal um, is often associated with forgiveness. It means a wonder or marvel. Um, and it, it's, it's because of that, that, um, and what, what really uh, sort of um, has struck me is, it really is a wonder. It's a marvel, not only because of what God has answered, his, his way of handling of the problem of sin, but also the wonder is in what it can do to a person. So that it's like an experience. We go through a learning experience through forgiveness that. Yeah actually changes us it can change the way we think it can take away um the burden of of sin and and so on i i i think it's it's that and i as far as like i, I say this in the book um that we don't really change after baptism we sort of we 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 change somewhat because we change our lifestyle. I certainly had to. Um, yep. And we, we make changes in our lives, but we're actually the same person. We, and we struggle to become more like Christ, um, but we're really the same person. And we still carry a lot of the same uh, things like that baggage, as I was talking about it keeps us locked in that way and unless we find what god has done uh, through the scriptures and we see it we spend time looking at it we won't change it can change us we see people in the bible where it's changed them such as the disciples um, the apostle paul and so on um, but because we don't really look at the subject i believe um we're not finding that change taking place and that's why people struggle with with the problem of sin and forgiveness yeah 
Yeah, and it truly is a wonder. And I mean, I know my life's been changed through through the forgiveness that God and Sharon have given to me. It's just been incredible, an incredible release and an incredible motivation to be able to serve in a whole heart in a new way. Uh, that that you just never experienced before you really experienced that forgiveness. It's, it's incredible. Sorry, yeah, I just had to put that in. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. I, I think that um, Brother Carter said it, that he says that forgiveness is not only freedom from the past, but it's a power for the future. So it, it's, I, I I think unless we see what this process is, it just becomes a sort of a legalistic, whoops, I slipped, uh, sorry about that, uh, mm. God, yeah. and we carry on with our lives. And actually nothing has taken place in our minds. Um, yeah. it, it, you know, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll think, oh yeah, I did slip up there, sorry about that. Uh, it doesn't do anything. We, we really yeah. have to go through the process that God has laid down um, for it to, to do its changing work. It needs to make that change to do its work, to to make an impact on us. And that's what yeah. it should do. I mean, from one, one moment, we're essentially dead. And it's the next moment, he's raised us up again. And if we were dead to sin, you know, because of sin, and now we've got a new chance of life. There's a there's a there's a whole new life to live, really, yeah. in a whole new way, so that we don't do it again. I, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I, I get all excited. <laughs> I think that um, <laughs> that the problem is is that we we learn things off, say, for baptism, and a lot of it is really sort of theoretical mm. i think that what happens is is that we we know we've done wrong uh and we feel bad about that and some people have a very strong consciences um that was my problem um hence why brother carter's articles were so helpful to me because it helped me to see another way the the thing about forgiveness is is uh, and his process is that it really teaches us one about god um in, in actual fact the bible speaks in such a way that that forgiveness is the way we learn who god is um and his character it's very easy to prove that that you know that it's through that that we um come to know god uh, you know in john 17 verse 3 this is life eternal to know the mm -hmm. the only true god well it's through this process the whole of the bible is about this subject in actual fact yes. yeah yeah um, and unless no, but... really sorry no no carry on uh, unless we really see what our nature is like and, and i think that that's the beginning part of our problem is is that we know we're bad but unless we see just how bad and also just how impossible it is for us to have eternal life um just like we can live in the truth for years and we can uh study our bibles and do all the right things we can go through all the uh living the life um because life has treated us okay and we can become involved in ecclesial life we can give talks we can um be on committees on the arranging brethren and we can be fully involved but actually and be thinking we're living the life but not realize and what happens is is that you can start feeling as if you are yeah you're doing okay <laughs> and those sinners over there are 
you know, yep. need my help. Whereas in actual fact, what once we've been through the process of forgiveness, the, you, you, you know you're in the same boat. And it doesn't matter who we are, how long we've been in the truth, we all are sinners. We all um, have great need of God and, yeah. and his help. And yes, we may have learned a lot and we may have learned uh, the answers to a lot of things, but actually we're no better than someone who's just come into the truth or someone who struggled their whole life in the truth. We are no better than them. And when yeah. we've understood that, that's when God can build a relationship with us as in Isaiah 66 or Isaiah 57, um, that, yeah. you know, to this man I look, to him that's of a humble and a contrite heart and spirit who trembles at my word because he really does understand. It's extremely humbling. Yeah. Do you think that this is a very pivotal part, this understanding of how much we need and can be forgiven for us to be able to then extend that forgiveness to others? I, th I think that, um, that that's exactly, um, exactly right. I, I think very often when, when, when I, um, started giving these talks people would say before the talks and before the book they naturally assume that it's about how we forgive one another and what i've learned through this this study is is that forgiving others comes when we understand what god has done for us when we've learned forgiveness then our approach to others totally changes I one of my favorite passages in the Bible is is James chapter five. I, I, I sort of hesitate to say things like favorite passages um, yep. because all of the Bible is from God. Um, but I'm drawn to this this section an, an awful lot, uh, particularly on this area, because J James the book of James is, a, is really about the problem of sin. Um, he opens with it that there are people that were blaming God because of things that were happening in their own sins. And they were really struggling. But he closes with the same, the same thing. And if you'll just bear with me, I, I, these words really uh, mean a lot to me. Um, if any among you is afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, mm -hmm. let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the ecclesia and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, I, I believe that this is someone who's spiritually sick. That's what this the these verses are speaking about and the anointing they may have used literal oil but i think it's symbolic of the word of god and along with prayer and they pray with them the prayer of faith is the person that's that's sick it has to be they pray but it becomes his prayer of faith otherwise mm -hmm. um it 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 can't af affect the person if it's just other people's prayers but then a lot, it, like the, a lot like the paralyzed man who was let down in the, through the roof. You know, yes, where it was his friends exactly. who let him down. But that's it was right. Him that was made yeah. him that was healed and forgiven. Yeah, that's right. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to make uh, this too long. It's, it's um, verse 16. He says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you, you all, may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much and when he says confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you all may be healed it's speaking of of everyone the elders and 
that, you know, everyone. Mm. So if we're confessing our faults one to another, and I don't think that he means that we're giving all the sort of details of, of every sin we've committed. I, I think it's really saying, yeah, I've got problems too in this area, or, you know, we're, we're all in the same boat. We're all in this together and we're praying for one another. It's If we had an ecclesia and an ecclesial world that lived like this, then we wouldn't have any problems. Well, we'd be, <laughs> we'd have far less problems than we do in ecclesial life because we're all thinking this way. We've all humbled ourselves and caring for each other. Um, yeah, and, and it, he, he concludes with that wonderful expression um, drawn from uh, Proverbs. But he says, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, turn him back, cause him to repent, let him know that he which has converted the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. That should be our yeah. spirit. So a person that my, my take on this is that a person who understands forgiveness in his own life will have this spirit. He will seek to help others. Um, he yeah. will. It doesn't matter what they've done, they will find. Uh, he, he endeavours to hide a multitude of sins, not not um, keep them out of the way. It means to to cover his sins. To have yeah. them covered, forgiven. Yeah. 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 So you you've had some personal experience with that yourself. Can you can you can you elaborate or share a little bit with that of that with us? Where you've had to forgive others for for some fairly major things that might have gone on in your life over the years? Sure. Um, uh, I, I think you've sort of mentioned about um, uh, abuse and um, we've, mm. we've certainly um, had a problem of abuse in, in our family. Not uh, It's affected a member of our family. Um, and I, I, I think it's sort of um, a lesson that that abuse doesn't abuse just the victim. It affects. It has a carry-on effect, and it certainly leaves its imprint um, upon the whole family. The whole family. Mm. Um, we can see that even in with with David, um, where Amnon. Uh, raped his sister Tamar and the effect that that had not only on David but particularly Absalom and so in other words the carry-on effect that screws people's minds up these 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 things affect us all and it I know that some people um, can cope with things like abuse um, they've been a, they've been able of themselves to manage that, but many can't. It can be quite crippling, quite devastating, yeah, I imagine. So. Mm. Yeah, I I think that um, it it can do things like um, just a word can send the person into another world. Um, it can it's they're like trigger words that that just send them into a state and it's without thought it's just immediate just like that um there's the it obviously is thought about it's triggered but it's just so fast and so it it it, it is a um a terrible thing it can be a terrible thing but in in such cases, as far as how this um, forgiveness um, is concerned, and I'm speaking from the point of view of the the victim, if we would if we'd like to call it that, um, is concerned. I think that in those kind of cases, that um, going to mental health services is is a is a good thing. 
um, Christ healed legion before he could then be in his right mind in order to be able to receive the things of the truth. He had a distorted view of Christ before that. Um, but I still believe that the answers are in the Bible. And as far as real healing goes, and true, we have to have our minds uh, capable of receiving the word. Um, but it's the healing that comes through the Bible and God's process of forgiveness. It is the answer. I, I have absolutely no doubt about that from, from my study and it's helped me and my family um, with looking at the whole, the whole thing. Um, mm. I guess, When, when, it, when it's an ongoing, sorry, when it's an ongoing thing, it's it, or, or, or when it's when it's something that's happened, say like an abuse situation, it's a it's a situation that just keeps giving, so to speak, and, and you know, like you were saying, you know, the word, the, you know, a word will come or a situation will come, and the whole feelings will come flooding back. How do you go? about forgiving in that sort of circumstance. I mean, like, sure, someone someone takes your pen and you go, oh, that's really annoying. You know, sure, one time forgiveness and that's it, done, it's over. Yeah. But, but where you've been emotionally scarred, how do you keep, you know, how do you go about forgiving and, and keep forgiving when it just seems to go on and on and on? Yeah, it's, it's sort of like, um... I guess, you know, there are degrees of sin, aren't there? And um, um, albeit that the devastation that has basically the whole human race has been abused, it keeps abusing itself. We're all victims as well as agents of sin. Um, but the the thing that really affects us most is probably broken broken trust and mm. it can really affect us and that's where we can harbor resentments and um, build up even hatred and so on now i i can't say that that i have um, experienced that in any depth and I, I can that's not I'm not saying that out of any um, um, I, I'm not being proud about this um, it's not it's either that I studied the subject very early on in my life and it's always uh, impressed me and I've understood it um, and only built on that or and or um, it's my personality um, so you know we all handle things differently I can't say that that's been the same for all in our family there's there's been the um, you know how could God allow this yeah and blaming God being angry with God now I can't say that I've been through all of that but I know it I've ex I've um, others in our family have experienced that and I totally understand it um, but coming to grips with what this all means and you know, understanding that it's God is not to blame uh, but God is aware and what I do believe we have to to realize is that there are all sorts of forms of, of abuse I, I sort of mentioned before in some way the whole of the human race has been abused um, there's all sorts of forms of, of, of abuse um, you know tensions in a marriage um, a, a controlling husband or a controlling wife um, you can have even between siblings someone that that bullies and just has overbearing um, 
toward their siblings and it leaves scars it really does or a child who who perhaps saw their father die in an in an accident or, or something it leaves scars we've got there's so many different ways and in some way or other we are we're all affected i can look at incidents in my my childhood where things that have affected me that have made me who i am today um and often it's broken trust that leaves those scars and and in my case it's it's really i i have a thing about sincerity and i i really need to know that a person is sincere um and being sincere myself and that doesn't come from the bible that's just my background that has affected me i hope that the bible has affected me for good in that <laughs> regard as well but but i do know that so so in other words there's more than just say sexual abuse that affects people and i i yes. think that coming to terms with with this is is really important that in actual fact we're all victims and we're all agents of sin we affect our own children and can leave scars on them and without even trying or even knowing um yeah. our own yeah. children you know often you have children say well i'm not going to be like like you <laughs> i'm going to do it yeah. my way and they do because and is that good well actually what's the motivation for that um it's all actually sin motivated because it's self trying to get control it's not trust in god and i'm speaking of sin at a very deep level here um but anyway i, I am going off um track I, what i think is important that we we need to all come to to understand and this is what we've been through in our family um, is that we can't allow anyone or any circumstance control our lives and that is part of the problem is that we remain being a victim if we allow that situation to keep controlling how we think about things and mm. We, we need to have make the choice that we want to be free of it and the answer to the freedom is in what god has done in the lord jesus christ and in forgiveness, forgiveness. which is very very powerful yeah but what about when the person who has sinned against us seems not to be repentant for what they've done how do we go about forgiveness in that sort of situation? Um, I, I think that we, we um, I find the answer to that in what I was sort of saying before about from James chapter five, that if we all see ourselves in our true state, um, then we, will realize that we um we can't hold against anyone else um what what they're doing is is themselves and they're responsible to themselves but we can't hold it against them hence the lord jesus christ could say father forgive them they don't know what they're doing or to yeah the other cheek and so on all the things that we've been asked to do um yeah and in fact giving it over to god like that is actually a, a very freeing sort of feeling where you can just say you know right you've hurt me but i'm just gonna let that go you know so i forgive you i'm gonna release my um my right to vengeance and leave it up to god 
and it's yeah. incredibly freeing. You can actually, well, I've, I've found I can get back on with my life again. Yes, I think I think that that's true. And and the other thing is is that the number of a, a times in the Bible, uh, in the New Testament in particular, um, where the passage you read from um, Matthew chapter six, well, those the words that you use, it's in the Lord's prayer. You know, um, forgive uh, my sins as I forgive others, and then he draws out of that just that statement from the lord's prayer um and goes on to to say um more about it but he he also says it in several other occasions not just in the lord's prayer um and one of those is in luke where he actually has it in the context of judging um and he he he, he says to um, judge not, and he also says condemn not, and I'm going off my, my memory here, but he, he says, um, and um, forgive, and you shall be forgiven. And I, it, what, what that sort of says to me is that it's, he's saying the same thing, several times over they're all synonymous terms so judging is the same as not forgiving or forgive not forgiving is the same as judging and that's true isn't it it's if we haven't forgiven someone we have judged them unworthy of forgiveness god may have forgiven them and we haven't well that's incongruous and I, I i think that the reason that we're told so often twice in ephesians um, I can't remember the other case. I think it's in Colossians as well. Um, we, are, we are constantly being told that um, we're to forgive as we've been forgiven. Mm. Why is that so important? Why does he keep stressing that? Or why does the Bible keep stressing that? Because we've got a problem with it. And I think we do, we can hold these resentments. We can... Um, um, Matthew 18, in the parable of the unforgiving creditor, was a person that couldn't forgive. He locked him up in a, in a put him in jail. Um, uh, and in other words, he just can't get out of that jail. And that's why um, the, the um, well, it's really representative of God. Uh, I can't remember. Who was the master anyway? The king, I, I can't recall, but um, I think it was the king. He he couldn't. Um, uh, he he then bound him again and wouldn't forgive his sins. So we're we're in danger of uh, if we don't. It's really a litmus test, I I believe. If we believe we love God. The measure of it is how we love our brethren. So it's yeah. the same as forgiveness. Forgiveness is really the love of God, um, his love towards us, and it's our love towards our brethren. Um, it's, it really is a litmus test. If we're struggling with a brother, then we need to remember our relationship with God and uh, rework that, and we'll look at our brother differently. Yeah. So when someone sins against us, how how do we develop a relationship with that person that we've forgiven? Especially if it still hurts, or especially if trust is broken. Is there a way that that relationship can be restored? If if someone um Sorry, I was just turning the sound up then. I got distracted oh, because I couldn't quite hear you. So I was turning the sound up. Uh, can you repeat okay. the question? How do, how do we develop a relationship with a person we're forgiven when it still hurts and when trust has been broken? Okay. Um, I, I guess um, 
this is sort of touching on probably my own experience with uh, that I referred to before, where where I did not hold it against this person. Um, and what often happens is is that these people themselves are victims of their own circumstances. Um, but it can still hurt. Uh, and the reminders of that hurt keep coming out, the, the mm. result of what's happened, you keep mm -hmm. being reminded. Um, and there, there have been other occasions where, where through a broken trust, um, you, you do feel it, but there's no way you can feel you are any better than that person. This is my own personal experience. Um, the the act mm. of it may hurt, but you can understand the weakness of the flesh. And, and I guess that that whether you learn to trust the person again is another thing. Um, I, I remember um, when I sent out um, copies of the book for people to give feedback um, before it was published. Um, and one of the comments was from a, a brother raising this kind of thing. And, and, and he said, but what if it, this person has a real problem? Um, and mm. it, you, you know that they will continue offending or you just can't trust them. Do you just welcome them and allow them to, you know, as if they, you know, your best friend? And I think it's, I guess it's the same as, well, can we trust ourselves to, to always do what's right? Um, <laughs> well, you're making it so that, personal, David. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I th I think that that um we can understand their problem and we can forgive them their you know what they've done, but it doesn't mean to say that we have to to trust their nature. Um, that's what I I believe. Yeah. Yeah. You you're bringing out some absolutely beautiful thoughts and just always turning the lens around to keep just looking at ourselves in the light of what God has done for us and that just is really beautiful it just puts everything into perspective in a really lovely way. I think um, one of the things that that has um, struck me you know we were talking about the wonder of forgiveness um, part of the wonder is something we sort of get used to because we, we talk about it a lot, and that's God offering his only begotten son. And this is part of our problem. Um, you know, even though I spent nine years reading, uh, preparing that book, I still have to go back over it um, mm -hmm. because we we just, we, we just, I don't know what it is, we, our, our minds, um, we just get used to it all and we forget. But the yeah. thing is, is that that Christ, when God gave his only son, he's never had a son before. Uh, he He's from everlasting to everlasting and he's never had a son. And he chose to have a son in order to show us i do understand how you feel yeah even though i'm god and i i i that god doesn't sin i understand how you feel and with your problem and he became identified by having a human son and not only that that son he put through every form of abuse that we could ever, you know, we can't say 
that we have suffered more than him because we can't enter into the mind of Christ. We are so wrapped up with sin that he had a mind that was way above our thinking and so much more sensitive to spiritual things. We just, we can't comprehend that. And, and I'm not trying mm. to make a big thing of that. I sincerely believe that. And he, he, he went through all he did and he could say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Mm. And you know, it's just, to me, it's uh, what God has done is so, so moving and powerful. And he's done it in that dramatic way in order that we sit up, take notice, and we look into what that's about. And that can affect us um, yeah. for good. And, and I suppose that's what God wants from us in a relationship from him is for that love and that forgiveness to really affect us so that we can show the same love that he's showed to yourselves and to everyone with us. Um, yeah. I mean, one of the questions I was going to ask, and I think you probably already answered it, is how does forgiveness affect our relationship with God? But I think, you know, you've pretty well already answered that. Sure. But if you want to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's a motivation that, that he, he provides us. Um, of course, forgiveness itself, um, I, I think that the benefits of forgiveness are seen in what David was asking for in Psalm 51. Um, he, he asks a whole series of things, all of which um, he could, he was helpless to be able to do. But if God would do it, then all these benefits came through forgiveness. And, and it, which is very, very powerful and helpful, including which is if you do this, if you forgive me, then um, I'll sing your praises. In other words, he's not able to sing God's praises until he's experienced forgiveness. But then, and I will help sinners, he says. Um, so, the experience of forgiveness does all these things, and it's it's very much. I mean, we we have to go through this in a somewhat theoretical way, but we've got to see behind the theory and own it ourselves, and yeah. then it becomes a power within us. Mm. What you just said leads on to hopefully probably our last question. Um, you know, David, you just talked about David, you know, being forgiven and then overflowing with, with praise. Tell us about the joy of forgiveness and, and the joy of forgiving and the joy of forgiveness. Well, I, I guess um, I, I sort of have um, just touched on that, that that was what David said he would be released and um, the, the joy that comes, I believe, very often that's spoken of in the Bible, it's an inward joy that um, uh, obviously it can be uh, very exciting and 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 powerful and and so on. But it's an inner joy that enables us to go through life um, in a way that. Um, we can take anything as it were. One of the things that I, I haven't mentioned is, is that, that within the process of forgiveness is coming to learn about God's character. And one of the characteristics is, is uh, hesed, and which is covenant mercy. And that covenant mercy really is speaking about Christ and the protection that that he affords us. And it's like a bubble, as it were, we're in him and he's our protector. Not that we don't go through trials, we go through more trials in Christ uh, because he's testing our faith. But we are his special care. And one of the things that that struck me at the time I, I looked at 
um, the, the wonder of forgiveness as a subject was how David, um, David's life after he had sinned and had been forgiven, his life looks on the outside a total mess. He was extremely sick. I know this isn't actually sounding much like the joy of forgiveness. But it is. It, it is. I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> well, I don't know that it was a joy to David, but um, it, well, the, the forgiveness was a joy to him and this inner joy, but he faced the consequences of his sins. God told him what those consequences were going to be, but David understood he had been forgiven. He totally understood that. He rested in that. He had total faith in God that he had been forgiven, but the consequences plagued him, and the whole of the kingdom was now in a state of, uh, trouble because of his sin and he knew it the effects the yeah. ramifications just ran through that his family through his court through the whole nation and the, eventually it ended up with with uh, two sons rebelling um, and David had to go through all of this which he just took he just took it all and how could he do that it's just amazing to see David how even though he was a very sick man because of his sin, um, I, I believe, he was able to accept this was God's hand and God can do what he likes to me because of what I've done. And he just accepted it and went through it. He still uh, prayed to God for his help through it. Mm. Some marvelous prayers, which Christ would then use as a basis for his trial and he could identify with David and what he did and I think it's a beautiful thing that God did was he left David on the throne in order to help us understand what it can be like after sins are forgiven and out of it comes all of these 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 psalms um, I, I, I can't remember the number now it's it's a, a huge amount um, through this period of his life, and he, it, it just shows his faithfulness, this this trusting in God, mm -hmm. and often like Psalm 103, he's 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 um, he's talking to himself, you know. Um, uh, what does he say? Psalm 103. I, every time I go to to um, mention this, I, I forget what the opening words are. Psalms. Um, Sorry about this. Yeah, bless Yahweh, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O oh my soul, and forget not. He's talking to himself about what God has done, and all the way through, he's trying to encourage himself that he has been forgiven. God's mercies, uh, and the reason I believe that he's saying these words are people around him as we know from other Psalms, we're saying, oh, this is God's judgment upon him. Right. And David knew he'd been forgiven, but he was resting in, in, in the Father. So in other words, sorry, that's a rather long-winded way of, of answering your, your question. Life may not be rosy, and it may not be this effervescent sort of joy and, and, and so on, Certainly, it was a relief to him, yeah. and it would be this this joy, and in the forgiving of others, you you mentioned the joy of forgiving others. Well, I think that the, 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 there's a joy in that because this is God's character displayed through us. If if you want an example of what we call God manifestation, this is it: God's love displayed towards us and through us unto others. That's God's love to that other person through us. Yeah. And so that's God manifestation. Um, it's very, very powerful and and joyful, you know, something to be joyful yes. about. Yeah. Mm. I imagine a lightness in the spirit, perhaps. 
yes a likeness yeah 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 well, thank you so much for for both of you for uh, coming on tonight and for your thoughts and and your 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 study and um, you know all the all the work that you've done in putting this this book together, The Wonder of Forgiveness by uh, David Bailey. It's available from your website, isn't it, David? From More Than uh, This Voice. Yes. So what's what's the website? Um, wilderness Voice Wilderness Hyphen Voice dot org. Thank you. Okay, so you can find it there if you want to get a copy. It's a really good read. I have read it and um, I really thoroughly enjoyed it all the way through.